Hey y'all, it's Charlie with Mural Performance. I spend a lot of time in the clinic helping to support people in changing habits and changing patterns. And sometimes this means I'm working with them to change a movement pattern that's become faulty and giving them the intention to try to work on sort of shifting and renormalizing that pattern, whatever that means for them. Sometimes it involves um, psychological patterns in relationships. And believe it or not, this, as you may or may not know, this has a really big impact on pain and performance, especially for athletes. And so if there's some stressful you know, uh, relationship in a person's life, um, it takes some time to, to rebuild a habit, to rebuild a pattern with that person. And it can be really challenging and quite frustrating uh, to move through that sometimes. Um, I talk about my kids on this channel often because um, they're amazing. And one of the reasons I had kids was because I get to learn a ton from them. From them. They're like my teachers every day of my life. And one, thing's, one thing I've learned from my kids is that it takes sometimes an incredible amount of repetition for them to learn a new skill. And that can mean anything from learning how to walk when they were young, to learning how to help around the house, to in this case right now, learning how to drive a car. Um, sometimes you feel like you're beating your head against a wall to try to get them to learn this new skill. And my experience is I can be reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing new behaviors over and over and over again and feel like I'm not making any progress. And then suddenly one day, something changes and something shifts. And not only do they learn this new skill, but they learn it really well and it becomes a habit for them and they almost find some mastery in it. And I've always thought that phenomenon was amazing. But what I realize more and more is how important this is in my clinical practice. And this is, this is sometimes helpful when it comes to movement where we're trying to unlearn old habits and learn new habits. But I think it's even more important when it comes to our psychology and our social realities where we're trying to unlearn sometimes really deeply ingrained behaviors and thoughts and feelings that hold us back. And sometimes we call these things fixed action patterns. These are things that we've learned through repetition and thus that we need to unlearn through repetition. When it comes to movement, uh, in, in my clinic, it's about helping people find just the right thing that's going to help them unlearn that old habit and learn something new. In terms of psychology, it's very similar. We're having to very intentionally identify the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that are getting us into trouble. And we need to notice them, and then it, hopefully quickly, and then we need to start to pave over them with new behaviors and new thoughts and ultimately new feelings. I've heard a number of uh, metaphors to help people understand this, but one of my favorites when it comes to athletes is this idea of winning a race or winning a competition. So athletes spend a lot of time training and training, training, practicing, practicing, practicing to get to the point where they win a race or when they win a championship or when they have some type of success. And for a lot of people, that journey has been really long. And that success has come out of a, a ton of repetition, thousands and thousands of tries and a lot of practice. And of course, with something like sports, it's very easy to motivate to work towards that. With something like our relationships and our psychology, when we're attached to it and when it's become such a habit, sometimes it's harder to work on those things. But really, the idea is the same. Um, winning the event or winning the championship is the outcome. And all the work that we put in going up to there, um, we'll, we'll see improvement and we'll get some positive feedback. But Sometimes it's not until we win that championship or win that race that we feel validated like it's all been worth it. And what I see happen to a lot of people, um, athletes and non-athletes, is they can sometimes get attached, too attached to that outcome. They get too attached to winning that race or achieving that goal or um, being able to be better at bringing that behavior into a relationship or being better about shifting how they feel about something or being better about trying to let go of thoughts. They get really attached to achieving that goal really quickly and that can be super frustrating. So we use the, the term outcome independence a lot when it comes to movement, when it comes to pain, and of course when it comes to sports. And that is that we need to stay focused on the process and not so focused on the outcome. Because if we can stay focused on the process, um, we will reduce a lot of frustration and we'll have more success, probably more quickly, at achieving the outcome by not focusing on it, which seems like a paradox a lot of the time, especially when it comes to pain. Because everybody I see wants to move better, but they especially want to have less pain. Everybody, everybody that I see you know, wants to improve their relationships and reduce their life stress, 
but they always want to have less pain. And so in the context of how do we support people, how do I support people when it comes to pain, using the idea of outcome independence becomes especially important. And that's hard for people because you have to be able to say to them, hey, you're going to have some symptoms. Sometimes the symptoms are going to get worse, and that's part of the process. Sometimes the symptoms will get better for a little while, and then they'll get worse again. And helping people understand that this is all just part of the process, just like training for a championship race and the setbacks and the disappointment sometimes that come along with that process of getting there. You know, no one ever gets to win a race or win a championship without some setbacks. And helping to overcome things like pain uh, is very similar. So where am I going with all this? Hopefully you're following me. I don't know if I'm following me. But the take home here is that just like with my kids, achieving any goal takes a lot of repetition. And sometimes that repetition doesn't manifest real time. It's not like a gradual um, progress towards some goal. It's messy, it's up and down, sometimes it's flatlined, and then suddenly sometimes you can have this spike and suddenly you're there and you've achieved some goal. So I just wanna encourage you to allow for that process, whether it comes to movement and your body, whether it comes to psychology and your relationships, understand that you're unlearning some of these fixed action patterns. Understand that you, you do that, you pave over the old habits by creating new habits, and you only do that through repetition. And most importantly, don't get attached to the outcome. The goal, of course, is for, for pain to go away. The goal, of course, is for you to get back to doing what you love to do. Of course, you want your body to feel better. But if we get too attached to that, it creates more fear, creates more anxiety. It, we put pressure on ourselves, and it tends to backfire. I work on that with my kids every single day is to try to let go of the outcome of them becoming the people that I want them to be or the people that I hope they will be. Hey, last thing, if you're a runner, I created a course for you called Revolutionize Your Running. If you're learning to unlearn some of these old habits and start to rebuild some new habits in your running, habits that will reduce pain, make you feel more durable, and improve your performance, please take a second to sign up and consume this content. I talk about the body, I talk about the mind, talk about the brain, we talk about pain, we talk about psychology, and we talk about all the things, mind and body, that add up to you having more success, more joy, and more fun as a runner. Click on the link below and check out my course. Hey, thanks for tuning in, watching to the end of the video. Take a second to subscribe, click the bell so you get a notification every time I post a new video. Please take a second to share with your friend who might need to hear this. As usual, I will look forward to seeing you next time, hopefully sooner than later. See you then.